Hello everyone, my name is Gabriel Rowe, and I'm here to talk to you today about the power of TypeScript. So let's talk about TypeScript. What is it? I code just fine in JavaScript, thank you very much. Why should I care about TypeScript? Isn't it just another JavaScript flavor of the week? Well, as noted by Andos Halsberg, one of the lead engineers on the TypeScript team, JavaScript at its inception was really only meant to write a couple hundred lines of code. But now many JavaScript applications are comprised of hundreds of thousands, if not millions of lines of JavaScript. So as Keto mentioned in an earlier presentation, this has to do with the fact that what JavaScript provides to us as programmers in freedom and ease of use, it sacrifices in scalability and maintainability of its code base. As a result, these huge code bases are really difficult to work with in JavaScript as opposed to other languages that scale well, such as C++ and Java. So one of the reasons for this is JavaScript's dynamic type declaration. Now, just to be clear, dynamically type has nothing to do with how fast you type or anything like that. It means that JavaScript dynamically chooses the primitive type that a variable um, contains based on the data you give to it when you declare it. And you can change it at any time. This is in contrast to static variable declarations found in languages like I mentioned before, C, C++, Java, whose types are set once when you declare the variable and then cannot change again unless you were to essentially garbage collect that variable and then redeclare it. So another thing that is interesting about JavaScript is that it is an interpreted language. This means that JavaScript only catches errors at runtime, where the resulting error messages are generally much less informative, which in, turns makes, which in turn makes debugging much more difficult. This is, again, in stark contrast to other languages that are compiled first and then executed, because the error messages are much more informative. So that's where TypeScript comes in. So there are a couple of main uses of TypeScript. Uh, the main use cases that we're going to look into today is uh, the static typing that it offers. So TypeScript allows you to write static types with your variable declarations. TypeScript then uses this information to give you a suite of tools for making your code more scalable and maintainable, such as type errors and intelligent code completion, which we can talk about um, a bit more later. So then when it comes time to run the code, uh, TypeScript compiles or transpiles to JavaScript, uh, and it's pretty similar in the way that uh, how Babel allows us to transpile uh, ES6 code down to ES5, for example. But I hear you guys, can hear you guys already. But Gabe, adding variables or types for everything? Ugh, gross. I like just writing var for all my variables and then never thinking about it again. Never, ever again. Well, first off, you should probably be using let and const by now. Hashtag ES6. Just saying. <laughs> but also, if you're like me, you've had moments where type errors consume you for hours on end, bringing you through numerous different files until you realize that you forgot to convert that string into a number. Perhaps this looks familiar. Maximum error call stack. So uh, this one in particular has haunted me. But yeah, so TypeScript, while it does yell at you, really allows you to be more precise and less error prone as a programmer when you're writing your code. So enough talking about TypeScript. Let's jump into some examples. Get out of this. So cool. Here I have some TypeScript. And uh, TypeScript is really easy to get started with, which is great. Um, basically, you just download it locally onto your machine. And then you uh, append a TS extension for any of your TypeScript files. So um, one thing that's really great about TypeScript is that you can write in TypeScript just pure, plain JavaScript. Um, so that kind of reduces the. Uh, overhead of feeling like, oh, I have to learn all of the methods or functions or whatever um, of TypeScript before I can start writing in it. So you can kind of just build up your knowledge as you go. So anyway, um, here's just a quick intro on the different static types that we can have. Uh, this is inspired by everyone's favorite workshop, Puppy Book. So we have a uh, doggo of choice, which we declare here as a string. And personally, mine is Australian Shepherd. Uh, we have Booleans. I love pugs. Um, <laughs> ideal number and puppy pile, 42, because we have a number here. And then we have an array here of strings. Um, so we have some funny names. I won't read them, um, but you can read them. Um, anyway, so uh, this, the array you can declare of, as having type strings. Um, one cool thing is that you um, basically, if I was to add a number 42 here, for example, notice that I get some errors. So it'll say, uh, essentially, types, type number is not assignable to string, because you're saying that the array is comprised of all strings, um, so you can't put any, any old type in there. 
And then also you'll notice that we have undefined and null, which you can declare. So basically, as you've kind of already seen, if I was to change any of these to say, say I take this Boolean and I change it to a string, I get this informative error that says type string true is not assignable to type Boolean, which is really helpful. Um, even though, to be fair, uh, that string might be you know, a truthy value. So another thing here is just uh, so you guys know, you can change this to have any type, um, or you can have types that you yourself declare. All right, so moving on. Um, another thing that uh, TypeScript allows you to do is it, it gives you an interface. So an interface uh, has two functions. The main function is that it declares uh, what an object has in terms of keys and in terms of what those keys, uh, what types they should store. But also, from um, a declarative programming standpoint, it's actually really great because think if you're jumping into a new code base and you want to know, OK, how do I make an object like they originally intended, you can look at this interface and say, oh, it has to have these types and it has, it has to have these keys. So here I have an interface, doggo info. We have a name, a likes, belly rubs, boolean, and a fave number of belly rubs. <laughs> and we have an array of doggo info. So I can say this array has types of doggo info. So yeah, here I have a dog uh, object named Bark Twain. Uh, they do like belly rubs, and the fave number of belly rubs is infinity. So why not? Um, anyway, um, so if I was to change any of this, again, say I change the number into false, something like that. Um, Notice I get an error here where I'm trying to push that object into the array because it's saying, oh, I have, I have to have this type and this uh, object that you're trying to push in doesn't have the correct uh, type associated with it. Same thing if you were to try to push in, say, any, any random old thing. So that's pretty cool. And the last one I want to show you is uh, just looking at functions. So um, say I want to open a doggo daycare. I have a function that takes a pup name and a number of times to feed. And um, they have a string and a number. And one cool thing is that with TypeScript, you also can declare what the function itself should return, um, or what type it should return. In this case, I'm just console logging, so I can just say void because I'm not actually returning anything. And it's just a simple uh, console log that says, take a, num uh, a name and uh, you can put in how many times it wants to be fed, which in this case is 52. Um, so yeah, here I have another thing. Last thing I'll show you is um, this thing that TypeScript gives you, which is an enum. So an enum is really cool because it basically allows you to decide what, sh what different types or things you want to be able to accept. So in this case, I don't know, I guess I'm really picky and I only, in my doggo daycare, will only take dogs named Spark, Pug, or Joe. I don't know why. But anyway, notice down here, I'm trying to pass in Jody, but it's giving me this error saying, oh, Jody is not assignable to that parameter name options because there is no Jody in there. So yeah, those are all cool things. Um, one thing, last thing I want to show you is that, say I want to take this file and turn it into JavaScript. All I have to do is uh, say TSC, which is the command to compile that code, and, um, and then give it the function. So it ran there, and now we have a functions.js file, which basically has all of those things, but it's, um, it's written it in just in plain JavaScript. So that's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, jumping back to the slides. All right. So just some uh, TypeScript good to knows. So one is that intelligent code completion is something that it offers. Um, intelligent code completion is basically because of the, the type um, associations that TypeScript gives you, you can say, oh, I want to change, I want to refactor this name to have it be completely different in all instances of that, of that change. But say you also use that variable name in a, in a function where it's not actually associated with that type. If you were to change that, the one that you originally wanted, um, it would change for all of them except for the ones that are not associated. So it allows you to essentially not break your code if you want to refactor the names or anything like that. 
Um, also, you've probably heard about Angular 2. It actually is written in TypeScript, so if you want to learn how to do Angular, uh, you're going to have to learn TypeScript. So just finally, some key takeaways. So JavaScript is fun, and it's flexible, but it's not always scalable and maintainable. So what TypeScript really allows you to do is to combine all four of those. Um, there's really easy, it's re really easy to get started, and uh, I really encourage you all to take a look at it. So I hope I've been uh, good in encouraging that. <laughs> so yeah, um, that's it. Thank you very much.